Hey, what's up, everybody? We are back again with CBD Business Success and the CBD Business Accelerator. Uh, I got a special guest, Avin Klein. He's the founder of eScale Agency. They make definitely some of the best CBD websites in the world, websites in general, not a, let alone CBD <laughs> websites, but they do specialize in CBD. And um, and to me, it's we were just saying before our uh, we went live, the thing, if you're direct to consumer. So really happy to have you today, Avin. Thank you. It's great to be here. And um, yeah, I've, uh, you know, uh, followed uh, everything you've been doing that for quite a while. And um, it's great to, to be on a chat. Oh, yeah, man. I've been the same. I've been a fan of yours for a long time now. So happy to be on. And um, and. I tell you, Avin, I talk to about 20 CBD brands a week on Zoom calls, and I get to take a look at their websites and their branding. And I would say 95% of the brands are not getting it correctly as far as the aesthetics and the layout of their websites and a bunch right. of other factors. So I'm really excited to dive into this super important topic. And everybody that's watching, this is so important, what we're about to be talking about, if you want to succeed with selling direct to consumer online. And and just real quick, Avin, if you could give us your background and and what also what made you want to get into working with CBD brands as well. I'd be curious to hear that. Yeah, you bet. So uh, I uh, you know, started out when I was used to uh, used to be young in the game and now what uh you know <laughs> having the uh the agency for i think 14 years i feel ancient now you know uh you know that the web even existed 14 years ago um but yeah started the uh, agency 14 years ago wow. and uh, when we started you know we started to actually build websites um and uh and for us that's that's when we started that's something that we felt was you know very uh very important um you know, a lot of times we we look past building websites and we look at you know the the marketing and some of the other parts of it. But you know, I was very passionate about actually having those websites built that were really going to represent the companies right online. And uh, like I said, it was 14 years ago. Uh, about five years ago, um, five six years ago, that's when we really started focusing on e-commerce and um, almost exclusively on e-commerce. Um, and then about three years ago, we uh, we really started focusing in uh, primarily on wellness. And um, you know we can sell a lot of things online, and, and and we have and do work with with various industries. But I really love like more the wellness types of uh, type of products, and that's where most of our we call them investors. If, if I say investors, that's what our word for clients. Uh, we can it. talk about another time. But uh, yeah, we uh, most of our investors are in the wellness industry, and you know personally, uh, I uh, you know, I love you know, performance. I love for personal performance. So. You know, I, I love the, the products that really help people to maybe not perform as much athletically, but just perform better in whatever they're doing. Um, and so that's one of the reasons that we gravitate towards wellness. Um, and then with CBD, I mean, I've had family members, have very close family members that their their lives have literally been changed by uh, by being able to uh, utilize CBD. Uh, and, um, and then also, you know, just the impact that it makes on people's performance, you know, mental, physical performance. So that's one of the reasons we love that. And, um, you know, uh, really good friends, really good family members have just been really you know, lives changed by CBD. So that's been something that really gravitated us towards CBD. Gotcha. Um, and, you know, so like a lot of our people that are watching these videos, that are newer to marketing and probably haven't built a website before, or maybe have done one in the past or something like mm -hmm. that. So that's definitely not their expertise. And so like when, when somebody's looking to build a website, what are some keys to making a website stand out in a crowded market? Like uh, we have over 6,000 CBD brands now. So what are some of those keys to hitting that market as a startup to really mm -hmm. make you pop and stand out? Yeah. I mean, and this is something that I'm passionate about because when it comes to websites, the the brand component is uh, is really the main focus of ours and so basically really working on no matt you're talking about this all day i think um but really working to get away from well, let's just slap a label on a product and sell it and just you know you know put our shingle out just like everyone else but really finding out what is the essence of your brand and you know that takes work it takes a, a lot of work uh, but 
first starting out with who are we, who's our audience, and um, uh, more importantly, even than our audiences, who are we, what's our unique selling proposition, what's our story? And we could get into more of what, what that looks like from a branding standpoint, but first starting with you and who you are, um, and then we can start to build out the website that resembles resembles you. Because <clears throat> otherwise, again, you're you're just just uh, everybody else's uh, shingle out, and um, you know, buy from me for no other reason than I'm right here. And that's definitely not the way to do business. And so, even when it comes to the web, starting first with who you are, what's unique about you, what's your story, and then we want to build that into the website. Make sure that website resembles your unique brand. And uh, yeah, it's tough to do, but it's definitely doable. And there's great companies in, of course, all industries, but great companies in CBD doing it that have a unique brand. For sure. And like I always suggest, like when you're starting up, if you don't have a huge budget, the number one thing, especially if you're going direct to consumer, you want to put your money in, in hiring somebody mm -hmm. like Avin people, because if you try to do this by yourself, it's it's just going to be hit or miss. It's already tough enough as an e-commerce business to succeed. Only one in 20 are actually going to succeed after, you know, three to five year period. Right. And so it, you want to get it right in the beginning. And I can't tell you how many brands, like literally <clears throat> most of the brands I talk to, I tell them you're going to have to redo everything from scratch because they tried building a website themselves yeah. or they hired somebody really cheap. And mm -hmm. it's just, you got to, especially the website and packaging, in my opinion, you want to spend that money up front on those two things, especially right. and get it right in the beginning. Otherwise you're just going to have to do it all over again. Like I used to work at a branding firm in DC and I can't tell you how many companies would reach out to us and they'd say, Oh, we just built our website. Now we need a branding. And I'm like, oh, like, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you did it. You did it backwards. Right. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But yeah, it's so important uh, just to get that right in the beginning people. So, you know, and, and avin has been doing this for 14 years, which is like, that's a long time in this. <laughs> it really, it really, and again, I'm starting like, to be embarrassed by saying it's, it's been so long because I'm starting to, to feel very, uh, very old. Um, and all the personal development you're doing is keeping you young, man. So keep, keep that up. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'd love to talk about that. We'll get into that topic okay. as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just, you know, I'm going to piggyback on what you were saying with, you know, when it comes to, like the brand, there's you know, first what we don't want is a commodity, right? And and we can almost everything can be a commodity. So we don't want to be selling a, a commodity. And at the end of the day, yes, the the there's going to be differences in product. And hopefully, your product is better than the rest for the right people in the right instance. But also, the, the brand is a big differentiator for your product, and it actually does matter because in addition to the product that you're selling how you're packaging it, how people are interacting with you, what it looks and feels like, that's as much a part of your product as the actual product itself. Um, and so, like you said, when, when somebody comes to the website, hey, I'm just like anyone, I can appreciate being mindful about what we're spending on. Um, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, there's a good quote I like, you know, resourcefulness is much uh, more important than resources. And, uh, you know, I like the idea of being very intentional with how we're spending our money. Um, but what I'd rather do is, is trim down maybe all the bells and the whistles and make sure what we're doing, like on the web, that we're doing what we do, very high quality, very strategic focus. And maybe we don't need this massive website with all these massive features, but at least what we are going to do, let's have it be very high quality. Um, and let's have it be very strategic and like, and just even when it comes to the brand, like I just, uh, it's you know April 30th and the, uh, the I, new iPad is just uh, available for pre-order. So I've been checking it all day, all day. And finally the button was clickable. Um, so I'm excited to get to my new iPad Pro. And when that iPad Pro comes in, you know, it's not, it's not gonna be just slammed into an envelope and sent to my door. Like, you know, even when, when it comes to me, of course, that packaging is beautiful. Yeah. Um, my wife makes fun of me because I save all of these these Apple boxes, but they're beautiful boxes, right? It's like you can't throw it away. This is a beautiful box. Yeah. Um, but you know they do that for a reason because yes, the product inside is important, but how you think and feel about that product, the packaging, how it's displayed, um, makes almost as big of a difference as the product itself. And and even when it comes to a website, when you get to the website, the website needs to help that person feel like 
your you know quality that you're going to take good care of them that you have a unique um, you know a unique brand so it's not just about throwing up the website and uh, you know as long as they can reach the product it's okay but it really does need to embody your brand and so we need to be very intentional about it oh, I love it yeah for sure and and I think less is more when it comes to direct to consumer websites like most yep. of the brands that we work with that are doing big numbers their websites are stripped down right. and they have less SKUs they might have one or two or three SKUs Mm -hmm. And it just seems to work better. And it's to me, it's harder to make a simple stripped down website than it is to yeah, make right. bells and whistles. Right, right, it right. Kind of reminds me when I was in the music business as a producer, like it's harder to make a very simple stripped down music piece than it is to do something with just a bunch of yeah. notes, you know. And All right, yeah. And, and I What's think. That about? Yeah, and I think you've nailed that skill with the design work that you do, though. Just being able to get a point across, but with stripping it down at the same mm -hmm. time, which is, that's right. really tough to do. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. What's the, was it Mark Twain? Everything that you to Mark Twain, but basically something like, sorry for the long letter, I didn't have time to make a shorter one or <laughs> something like that. But yeah, I completely agree. It can be much <coughs> more challenging to simplify it, but simplifying to the essence um, is very important, especially as we know, with these new these new potential customers, I mean, you have a split second or a few seconds to really make them, not just sell them, but make them feel like they're in the right place. And that's the important part, make them actually feel like it, not to read that they're in the important place, but they're feel like, hey, I'm in the right spot to keep going. So yeah, absolutely important. Yeah, I feel like the brand Feels has done an amazing job at yeah. that, like just really right. getting to the point talking to the customer with their messaging and yep. alleviating any concerns that a new customer might, might have and doing it really effectively in a fast way. Because like you said, it's, you got to get their attention right away. You got to hook them right away. Mm -hmm. And, um, right. well, what do you think about the way feels has positioned? Gotcha. I've been, I've been a fan uh, of feels in their, uh, user experience for years. I think they're doing it very well. And I think that's a great, it's a perfect example of simple, but yet you still, if still feels quality, you know, sometimes something so simple, it feels very cold uh, and it feels just like, you know, a lack of anything. They, yeah. they do it so simple and focused, but yet the, it feels, um, feels comfortable, feels soothing for them. So yeah, I'm a big fan of feels and it's very conversion focused too. If you really, you pick apart the, their site, they've done a great job to be very conversion focused to bring that person inside the funnel. Definitely. And but the, here's a question, too, that I've been wanting to ask you. <clears throat> so I see a lot of brands copying feels design mm -hmm. layout yeah. and it just doesn't seem to work when they right. do that. Like even though feels nailed it, but you can't mm -hmm. just go and copy exactly what they did and think that you're going to be the next field. Right. But, but how do you as a brand, how do you take those influences that you like? and then kind of incorporate them into your own brand without being just like a carbon copy or like, what is your advice as far as that goes? Yeah, so so first, uh, a roundabout way to, to get to that uh, question. So first is actually taking some time to figure out you know, who you are and what your brand is. Um, there's a lot of great frameworks and I'm, I know you've, you've guided so many companies through through, through this, but I, you know, I personally, I love even something as simple as a lean canvas. Um, you know, the lean canvas is a, just a very simple framework that goes through essentially just think of starting a business. What's what problem are we solving? What's our solution? What's unique about us? I mean, even something as simple as a lean canvas, which is, you know, uh, you know, five to you know, nine, um, questions. A lot of companies don't even go through that to figure out how, how they're uniquely trying to solve this problem. So first is doing just at least a little bit planning strategy work in terms of what problem we're solving and how we're solving it differently. And then once you have that nailed down, I agree. What we don't want to do is be like, oh, we love feels. So let's be feels. Um, although I do appreciate modeling. I mean, one little one way around that that I like is taking brands from other industries and and really trying to like you know we want to be the peloton of cbd for example yeah i'm not saying like, anybody should be the peloton of cbd but sometimes you can bring in <laughs> brands from other industries like you know this meets this for cbd and that's kind of a nice hack a way to model or take influences 
but yet not just trying carbon copy, which like you say, never works. So thinking like, you know, what, what brands your unique audience uh, really, really loves, what brands kind of feel similar in terms of what you're wanting to, you know, come the way you want to come across and then trying to work them into, into your uh, industry and in the CBD in this case, you know, it's one way to do it. I love it, man. You're, you're speaking our language, Avin, like everything that I preach, you're, you're backing me up. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, good, good. I appreciate it. Um, and so like uh, one thing, Marty Marion's one of our experts that we work with and he's been in the game forever like you and um, he's very big on make, making sure the website loads really fast. Like yeah. how, how important is that to a website? Like what, what can that mean for a website that's loading really fast compared to one that's not? Yeah, I mean, it's it's honestly it's massively important. And this is one of those that gets very tactical, um, it's, you know, but it's it's just so important. Um, you know, so many different studies have been done to you know, measure the actual impact. Um, you know, I, I had, uh, saw one come across where like at Walmart, which I don't, you know, in some ways, let's learn from Walmart. I don't personally want to to be a brand, um, you know, that's the same as Walmart. But hey, I'll learn from them all day. And uh, you know they did a you know study where you know for every second uh, of additional page load time it, it uh, impacted conversion rates by like two percent, which is massive. You know sometimes when you think of like a one or two percent conversion rate like you know small numbers, but we're talking about after we've spent all the money that we spent to get somebody to our website, one or two percent makes a massive difference to your bottom line. Um, and so every second of improvement in page load time you know, ended up increasing our conversions by about uh, 2%. So it, it definitely is massive. And think about on mobile, um, you know, people are, are loading things on, on mobile a lot of times, especially, you know, in our industries. And, um, you know, sometimes our connection is, is slower. Uh, so from a conversion rate standpoint, it's massive. Uh, but then also, you know, from a search engine uh, standpoint, now SEO is not my thing. Uh, even though we're very cognizant of as we develop websites and um, you know Google looks at at um, load time as a ranking factor and so not only with conversions but also with, when it comes to showing up in search it's absolutely wow. important wow I didn't know that that Google looks at the load time and in, in, yeah. in the ranking so that's very interesting um, yeah. and yeah it could even milliseconds people you just got to keep tweaking yeah. it testing it as you go. It's always a yeah. work in progress, of course. So, right. And um, you want to get depressed. Like uh, even some great websites, you pull up, um, if you Google, uh, Google uh, page speed test and you go to their page speed insights and you look at that graph that they give you. And I'm usually not huge on like automated ratings that websites give you, but hey, when it's Google giving you a rating, I'm going to listen. And um, if you plug in a lot of websites into the Google page speed insights, like you're going to see like out of a hundred, you're going to see like 30 or five, you know, like really low numbers. Um, and, you know, you want to be up in the, uh, I mean, there's not necessarily a magic number, but I, you know, I want Google giving me that green and not that, not that uh, red in that graph. So take a look at your website, look at, at Google page speed insights and, and see how Google's thinking about you from a speed standpoint. Gotcha. And like, if you build a custom coded website, does that help as far as speed? Absolutely. And, you know, when it comes to custom code, of course, anytime that we talk about custom, obviously custom means more money in the beginning. But I'll tell you, there's been so many times that we we almost always do custom. Now, it doesn't mean that we have to do, like I was thinking, sorry, I know a lot of people are Android you know, lovers. I'm personally an iPhone lover. And I know if I go in the Apple store, any iPhone I buy is gonna be very quality. Now I might, I don't keep track of the numbers very much, but I know, you know, I think the iPhone 12 is out. So I might buy the 12, or I might buy the, you know, whatever's still around, the eight or the whatever down here. No matter what I buy, it's going to be very quality because um, yeah. Apple's going to only put out quality products. I don't have to buy the one with all the bells and whistles, but no matter what I do, it's going to be quality. In the same way, I think for with us, for example, so everything we do is custom. We don't necessarily have to do the, the biggest, giant, most expensive website in the world. We can start very you know small um, and uh, lean, but no matter what we do, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be quality and part of that is custom because when we start pulling like an off shelf theme one no matter what it's not going to look like your brand it's going to look like every other brand um, yeah. or, your, or non brand it's not going to look like your brand it's also um, going to be loaded with all of this you know extra code um, to make it work for thousands of websites not just your website 
And so that's going to take longer to load, et cetera. So yeah, in a perfect world, an ideal world, really, it, we're, 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 we're building a custom website. Um, doesn't mean we start from absolutely scratch. We can start from some things to where we're not um, reinventing the wheel, but we're developing a custom website, which is going to make sure that in the short and long term, it's going to load fast. Gotcha. And here's a question I always see in the group, uh, WordPress or Shopify for a CBD brand? <laughs> yeah. You know, I can appreciate that. I, and that's, a, that's a tough one too, because I personally, I love Shopify in WooCommerce, um, and our team, you know, loves it. Some of our team members, if you pull them, you know, they'll prefer one or the other, but both are great. You know, Shopify is great because it's so, you know, quick, like uh, mm -hmm. quick in terms of getting started. Like, you know, you and I both could be selling, selling something with a brand new Shopify site, you know, by, by midnight tonight, if we want, it's so quick, it's, it's easy to do. Um, and it does scale, you know, we know a lot of major brands are running on Shopify, uh, the WooCommerce, which is um, the primary shopping cart for WordPress um, is also fantastic in, in its own right. At the end of the day, to me is when I'm talking to somebody that's wanting to, you know, do a new site, if they have like a lot of customization they want to do, like, like they want to really, have a lot of custom features. Like think of like a very custom subscription program or a very custom mix and match product where they can, you know, add these things, not these things. And we have certain pricing, like a really kind of more in depth uh, functionality. Then WordPress is a good way to go because there, there is ways with Shopify for us to basically paint ourselves into a corner. You know, there's certain things we just really can't do feasibly in Shopify. Yeah. Um, so if you're wanting to, like, if you're just kind of like, I really like to do really custom features. I want to work in a very custom way. Then uh, WordPress and WooCommerce is the way to go. Otherwise, I think Shopify is the way to go. That said, I still don't. I still kind of hate Shopify's blogging engine. It's not. It's not a great blogging engine, as far as I'm concerned. They do have the ability to have a blog, but it's not great. And so you have a lot of companies that are running Shopify for their storefront, and then also maintaining a WordPress for their blog, which yeah. can be. You know, it's a, it's a nice workaround, um, but if you're going to be really content focused and you want to build out like this massive library of content, you may want to go the WooCommerce route. Of course, if we're working with somebody, we'd be happy to you know dig into it with them and really determine what the best route for them is. But uh, you know, in general, Shopify is fantastic. You know, I love Shopify, and uh, it's definitely a great tool. Is I always hear that, or I've heard before that um, WooCommerce is better for SEO than Shopify. Is that why you were talking about with the blog thing? Is is that one reason why they switch it to uh, WooCom? Yeah, um, it's definitely from a content marketing standpoint. Like if you're going to be very content marketing focused, which you know is a good strategy for SEO, then WooCommerce and WordPress is just going to have a much better engine for that. It also gives you a lot more tools um, for, uh, you know, for search engine optimization. That said, Shopify does have, you know, you can do most of what you do in WordPress in Shopify when it comes to SEO, but they kind of, they dumb it down, so to speak. Um, and so, um, you know, it's, it's a little more plug and play with Shopify, which, um, you know, like I said, it's dumbed down a little bit, but I mean, you can have a great ranking site on, on Shopify, just like WordPress. Um, but, uh, if you're going to want to do a lot of content marketing, WordPress definitely is going to be the way to go. Um, additionally, one thing to keep in mind, and you know, we never know what's going to happen with with the industry, but you know, Shopify is a closed system. Um, so when, and again, I like Shopify. We're Shopify agency partners, but when Shopify doesn't like something, they can boot you off. Yeah. Um, and so I think I didn't follow really closely, but I remember. You know, Shopify, just as a random example, Shopify and MailChimp stopped working together, if I remember right, in the last however many number of months. Yeah. And I saw somebody on the team share that MailChimp has their own store now, but probably a reason, um, reason Shopify booted them. Um, but as an example where it, Shopify can just turn you off. And if Shopify decides they don't like CBD six months from now or one month from now, they can turn you off. With WordPress, that's not going to happen. It's not you don't have WordPress calling their shots. So that's always something to think about. Um, it's you know it's at this point you know where the industry is opening up, it's not closing down, um, but it's always something to to consider. Yeah, that's some really good advice there to, for people to think about as they're getting their uh, foundation set up. And um, and one time I was at a uh, like an event. Um, with a bunch of marketing gurus. And I remember the website experts saying, uh, 
Do not use sliders on your website. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? I, yeah, ab absolutely right. And you know, if you want to, you know, if you want to get in a heated debate with a bunch of conversion rate optimization experts, um, then uh, you, you know, talk about sliders. Actually, frankly, it's not going to be a heated debate because CRO or conversion rate optimization experts are all going to pretty much agree. If it's important, don't put it in slider. There's pretty much no reason to have a slider on your homepage because I mean, think about it. What do you put in the banner section of your homepage? What's most important? Yeah. And what are you going to do? You're going to wait to where somebody has to wait three seconds to see what's <laughs> most important, you know, and then when they finally get to see it, then it goes to something else. Like just, you know, the data, you know, the tests have been done and the data's in and sliders just should not exist um, for, uh, for anything important. I mean, if you want to bury a bunch of stuff you don't want people to see, put it in a slider. <laughs> Otherwise, it should not be used. Gotcha. Um, and um, uh, what about, I see some sites nowadays, they put a video at the top of the fold. What are your mm -hmm. thoughts on that? Where, where it just automatically starts playing when you hit the site? Yeah. All right. So a few things. In general, yeah, video can definitely work great. You know, we all, you know, have you know, heard the Dollar Shave Club uh, fame. Um, and of course, that that's worked its way into what works well with D2C is going to be great videos. Now, that said, if you don't have a great video, don't slam a video, you know, up there just to, you know, check a box of, of videos important. Somebody heard some guru tell them video is important. So they slam some, you know, junky video up there. If you don't have a great video, don't run with a video there in the top, in my opinion. Don't give it high real estate. But if you can create a, you know, great video that's on brand, that's different, then definitely it, it can be a good place. Now, this is just a caveat, but auto playing videos generally aren't going to be good now. Um, cause I think even Safari and Google both are basically keeping auto or Chrome are keeping, um, videos from auto playing and can, can kind of throw off the user experience a bit. Um, but yeah, if you've got a great video, great on brand video, run with it, but don't just slam any video in there just because, you know, someone told you videos important. Gotcha. Um, and then like when you work with clients, do you help them with the messaging aspect of their sites Absolutely. or? Absolutely. And that's why, like, what I call, like, what, to me, you know, br we could talk about branding all day. And brand is, uh, you know, so many different definitions of branding. We all know it's not about the logo. Um, but, you know, a brand is how you feel and think about a company in, in a lot of ways. Um, but for me, when it comes to building a website, we're talking about branding in two, two ways. We're talking about visual branding, how it looks. And we're talking about you know, brand messaging, basically how we communicate um, and talk about the brand. And one of the big things that, that I'm about and our team at East Coast about is we don't just build pretty websites. You know, that's a, you know, it can make you feel good, but it can be a waste of time and money. Let's build websites that are on brand, conversion focused. Um, and so when it comes to that messaging, it's just as important, if not more important now than it was 10 years ago. We like to talk about video. We like to talk about a lot of these things. But the messaging is the heart of it, how we're communicating about the brand, what's unique, what's what's uh, you know, what's differentiating you. And even if a, a company comes to us and they don't have a big budget for uh, for messaging, um, we can guide them. And a lot of it, frankly, you can do on your own just with some guidance. For example, if you Google um, messaging framework, there's kind of a standard messaging framework that's commonly used. And it just takes some time um, just to go through and really kind of figure out what your unique selling proposition is, what's your, you know, kind of your key brand pillars, et cetera. So we definitely, we don't want to build a website without messaging nailed down because otherwise we we might as well, I don't know if you've been to a website and somebody forgot to remove the Latin placeholder text on it, <laughs> you know, but to be honest, if you weren't intentional about it, you might as well just left the placeholder text in there because it's just sounding like every other brand. So you really want to be intentional about the messaging, but it doesn't have to be that hard. Um, and so, yeah, we, we guide people through that or sometimes we take the whole, you know, take the lead on that ourselves. Yeah. And I think some of the most simple things are the most powerful, like, um, that's where Fields got it right again. Like on their homepage, there most brands that I talk to, you go to their homepage and they're talking about, they're bragging about how great their brand is and we're CO2 extracted, pharmacist formulated, blah, blah, blah. And the customer doesn't care about any of that stuff. Right. And, uh, Fields actually talks to the customer and instead of talking yeah. about how great Fields is, they're talking about how they can help the customer out. And I think it's yeah. just little tweaks like that, knowing how to position the messaging. 
Yeah. Um, it it yeah. just goes a long way. Yeah, I completely agree. And, and frankly, you know, we talk about fields. If you want a master class in messaging, just go to go to the site. I mean, look at like if I, I'm looking through here, you know, um, just you basically have taglines really intentionally put along with with key areas. So, you know, when they have like even even when they're promoting their membership, the, the tagline is feel your best every month. That's really well done because it, mm -hmm. what that's doing, it's taking in, you know, many things, one feels and feel, but about what we're actually doing, the benefit, we're helping you feel your best. We're not talking about get new product every month. That's that's feature, not benefit and the why. The why is to feel your best every month and it coincides directly with the subscription. I mean, that's a classic example of just great messaging. Yeah, they do it. And man, they just do everything right, pretty much. Like yeah. I, I always talk about them, and I, I hate to talk about them all the time. <laughs> right. They do a lot right. Yeah. And, um, and so to switch topics a little bit, like being uh, entrepreneurs, we all know it's it's not easy. Like one of my mentors says, if it was easy, everybody would do it. And right. So, like I, I feel like you're a really high performing entrepreneur since I've known you. And like, do you have a daily routine to keep you on track? Something that you do every single day? Yeah, I uh, and that's kind of honestly my. If I have a sauce, it's not secret. But if I have a sauce, it's routine. You know, it's uh, yeah. That's that's me. I'm like uh, I'm just I'm steady. I'm structured and steady. And part of for for context, I'm also. In one ways, I'm, I'm very adventurous. Um, I'm currently living in Florence, Italy, even though I'm from Florida. Um, I, you know, traveled to, you know, 30, 35 countries. I love to bungee jump. I bungee jumped 26 times, no, oh, 20, 23 times. Um, one of those, I broke my shoulder. You know, I love to do stuff like that. I love adventuring. Mm -hmm. But on, on the, in order for me to adventure and like live this very cool life on one side, I'm like the most boring on the other side. So. Technically, yeah, I'm an entrepreneur. I, uh, I'm, I'm the boss of a, of a great company with a great team. So technically, I could be like, hey, 830, you know, instead of, uh, in, instead of uh, you know, showing up in our team meetings, I'm going to go go for a hike or, you know, bike ride, something like that. That's never an option for me. I show up. That's what I do. I, I show up. Um, you know, and I, I have these rhythms in, in, my, uh, in my day that I just do. So for me, what what uh you know my sauce my secret sauce it's not that secret is i just i'm structured and i show up and i you know i try and implement these rhythms of what needs to happen into a you know, into a schedule that way no matter what i don't have to make the decision again today i'm just going to do it i'm going to show up love it man and um and like you you have a big team around you and you're also work you know you're part of lucid ad agency and you're yep. helping with all the operations there how important is delegation for you and and where did you learn how to delegate like are there any books or programs or like because i feel like being an entrepreneur in the beginning you mm -hmm. try to do everything yourself right. you get overwhelmed and then you got to learn how to delegate otherwise you just get you know more. right yeah 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 so for me you know it's always a work in progress um but i'd say two main things uh, for me is one is very um tactical I used to even have this post-it note that uh, on my computer said 80%. And um, I, I stole this or gleaned this from a guy named John Maxwell. I think I remember hearing him talk about something like that. But basically, hey, if someone else can do this 80% as well as I can, they should be doing it. Yeah. And that's not a magic number. Um, but basically the idea is, no, maybe in our kind of work world, we think we're the only ones that can do it, you know, great. Um, but hey, maybe not if someone else can do it just as well as I can. But hey, if they can do it 80% as well as I can, they should be doing it and empower them to do it. So continually, you know, putting that in my mind. And additionally, and this is something I'm, I'm continuing to work on now, it's really trying to speak in terms of objectives or outcomes rather than, you know, exactly how to do things. So when I'm asking somebody to do something, is really trying to speak in terms, if I possibly can, of objective and outcome and not exactly how to get there. And so even when I'm, if I'm creating a task for someone or communicating verbally, I literally try to use, like if I'm creating a task, I use the word objective and I try and describe the outcome. That way I don't get too into the weeds of micromanaging exactly how it should be done, but rather what is the objective. And uh, uh, now, I, I will say that this gets into the weeds, but we, one, we, we've got to be careful and intentional about putting that up against the lens of the risk and the context. So if this is a really, really high risk thing um, and you have a much more um, 
experience about it, they know maybe you're not just talking about objective, but you're talking about how to get there. Um, and then also if the person has no context, then maybe we can't just talk about objective. We need to talk about how to get there a little bit. For example, let's say you're in San Diego, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's say that you had an objective to, to get this, uh, item to Seattle, you know, to hand deliver this to Seattle by, uh, you know, by Monday at five o'clock. So that's an objective hand deliver this to this person in Seattle by Monday at 5 PM. So in a lot of times, sometimes you can literally give that objective, but I mean, I'll be extreme. Um, you know, my, uh, my, let's say somebody's, my daughter's too young. She's, she's only three years old, but let's say you've got a 16 year old that just got their license. Maybe you don't just give them the objective, right? Maybe you actually give them much more details of how to get there, or maybe yeah. talk about, Hey, you know, going through LA traffic at this time is a nightmare. Don't do that, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> yeah. my, my point being, <clears throat> you, we always have to think in terms of not just the objective and the outcome, but how much context is a person I'm giving this to. If they have a lot of context and it's a lower risk thing, then hey, let's only talk about objectives. But sometimes, you know, that, that's gonna frustrate an entrepreneur that says, hey, I keep giving them objectives and they, they do it <laughs> wrong every time. Well, keep in mind, what context do they have and how, how big the risk? So keeping that caveat in mind as well. Yeah, I like that. It depends on who you're talking to for sure. Like yeah. I notice like, you know, if you're working with a VA overseas that yeah, maybe yeah. is doing tasks, you have to be, you have to right. explain all the details to them more so, you know, and so it just depends on the audience and that respect yeah, right. for sure. And right. but I love it. That's kind of reminds me of a book, uh, The One Minute Manager by Ken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But kind of, yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that book a lot. Um, and it's just uh, great giving people the ability to go off and figure problems out on their own and not micromanaging them. Right. I, I love that as a leader. I think that's yeah. the way to go. And and of course, leadership comes from the top down. Like even yep. today, you showed up to our meeting like right on time. <laughs> and so it's like, I'm sure your staff is like that. And it's just, it all starts from the top down and, yeah. and you're a great example of what a leader should be in my opinion. And okay. So yeah, it's just really cool to watch you and what you do, man. And I learn from Thank watching you. you. <laughs> so. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, that uh, that means a lot, and that is something I do believe very strongly in. You know, leading by example, um, and that is uh, that's definitely of utmost importance when when you're leading people. So yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, and and what would you say are some of the like personal or business development books or programs that have really impacted you in your life that you would suggest to people that are entrepreneurs that are getting going in that area? Yeah, so first I would say rather than a particular book, which I, I'll t I love talking about, so I'll talk about it in a second, is a a bias towards continuing to learn and and when you are deficient in an area or whatever you're focusing on is making sure you're you're getting as much information as you can like for example i literally i'm i'm kind of a uh, i'm kind of a geek about uh documentation like personal documentation like literally even on my phone right now i have uh, I, I call it the ak often client os and right here, as I'm looking through, I see my, my vision, my objectives, my KPIs, my personal KPIs. I also, inside of here, I have my areas of focus right now in terms of learning. So what am I really trying to master and learn right now? And so depending on that uh, that topic, I'm continually listening to audiobooks, I'm reading actual books and even doing courses on that topic. So overall, I would say being very intentional about what area you need to grow in and making sure that you're continually reinforcing it. Um, past that, as far as more, more um, specific uh, books that have really you know made a difference uh, to me. I, I really like scaling up. Um, it is the um, originally was called the Rockefeller Habits, but I think Vern Harnish. Like that's like especially for a company that's already established. Maybe you're not a startup, but you've been around for a year or two. Like that's like this great mix between strategy and actual how to do it. Um, it's a great, very tactical book. Um, I think that one is one I'm I'm really reading for the fourth time, I think, right now. Um, wow. And uh, yeah, Scaling Up is just a fantastic book. Um, but other than that, I uh, uh, there's some books I reread every every year. But I'm continuing, like, to me, I talk about books, like, I think they're, like, the biggest life hack in the world. Like, 
like think about somebody they took everything they know about a subject like a master expert in an area they took everything they know about a subject they took months and months to get it down and then after that they edited it and got it down further and mm -hmm. then after that they, they handed it to other people to say hey what's what's not clear about this and so they edited it further like when you hold a book like you're holding like this massive high leverage item for learning everything that the author knows on the topic so i'm a big believer in in books um and uh you know it's uh, one more thing i'll say i'm a big i love audiobooks too i, I like to read uh, read on my kindle but i uh you know I'm, i walk every day and I'm, i work out and um, i'm constantly listening to audio, audiobooks yeah me too i'm always switching it up it's much better than watching tv or the news okay, yeah I, oh, gosh. Watch, I haven't watched tv in like 10 years or more yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> nice yes definitely much better i'm yeah. curious is there a, is there a book uh that, that's just uh big for you um <clears throat> lead the field by earl nightingale is uh mm. <clears throat> it's one of my favorites of all time yeah. like i go back to that one at least once a year and yeah okay really changed my life at a time really? I needed that um and it's a lot of timeless principles but it's, it's just really a great book um and then also uh think and grow rich by napoleon yeah. hill of course yeah. Yeah, uh, that's like the Bible. I, I got to yeah. interview uh, 6,000 entrepreneurs in two years when I worked at a personal development company called really? Conant. And um, a lot of them were multimillionaires. And every single multimillionaire that I met, that's like their Bible, Think and Grow Rich. Like all of them, all of them. Like I can't think of one that didn't read that book. <laughs> you know you know what? I'm, uh, I'm writing it down and putting stars by it because I need to read it again because it's been, uh, it's probably been a decade. So I need to read it again. Yeah, I try to go back to it and like, you know, every now and then just go back through it. Um, and then another uh, author I'm really liking recently is Michael A. Singer. Um, he's uh, He preaches about Zen Buddhism um, and he has a book called The Untethered Soul. And I forgot the other one, but I've read the, um, does he, is it the something project, the uh, Surrender yeah, Experiment? Yeah, Surrender Experiment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That book is incredible. Like, so the people watching this guy, Michael Singer, he just decided to surrender to life using these Buddhist principles. And he created a multi-billion dollar software company just by surrendering. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know, that one was a hard one for me to uh, start because I think just like you probably, Matt, like I'm goal oriented. I'm like, I have an objective. I'm going to go after it. Like, I, I, you know, this will be interesting, but I, I don't think I'm going to really like this. But, you know, the way you talk about it in there, he he surrendered but he he always had kind of this even though it wasn't like a written in stone goal it was like he had this direction you know objective and it was and it was like whatever you whether you call it god or the universe um what etc you know kind of moved in that direction so yeah i uh i like uh i liked it and i thought i would kind of hate it yeah i think the the most important thing i learned is just how to not hold on to things like especially a feeling that you don't like it's just it's not you you don't identify with the feelings just let them mm -hmm. flow through you and yeah some yeah. of the principles that he teaches as far as that goes but yeah yeah i think it's important people just to keep on reading and learning new things and um and also just focusing on your strengths and keep getting better and better at what you do yeah. and, and delegate your weaknesses is uh, you know of course you want to know what's going on but if you're mm -hmm. like me i know i'm I'm not an artist. I know good art, but I'm never going to be a, like, uh, mm -hmm. I can never build a website like you. I just know I don't have that in me, but I want to know who can do it in right. a professional manner. So I know enough right. to be dangerous when I'm hiring somebody. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. And I feel the same way. And actually even on that, like for us, like to really build a, a solid website, we need about five different skill sets, you know? And so, uh, and that's where we, you know, have that team where we have the, you know, the, the right person leading messaging copy, the right person leading UX, the right, right person um, doing front end development and back end development. And so, yeah, I can even very tactically there appreciate having the right people to, uh, you know, leveraging people's uh, strengths. Yeah, that's why it all goes down to having the right team around you yep. and delegating. And um, <clears throat> but Avin, if people want to work with you, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Yeah, uh, definitely. So, of course, uh, if you're talking to uh, Matt, I know Matt, you can probably send us uh, send them over our way. Um, if you go to um, uh, our, our website at, at eScale.agency, 
you can learn more about us and you can also learn more about uh, some of our focus on CBD. And then, yeah, if you're talking to Matt, I'm sure Matt, you, you don't mind looping them in. And, and, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Feel free to reach out to me, people, and I'll connect you to Avin and we'll make sure it's the right fit. And then also I'll put a link to the link that you sent me earlier, Avin. I'll put a link, people, in the okay. post about how Avin works with CBD brands so you can get more info there. Um, yeah. And, but, and what you, you mentioned earlier, too, you alluded to, I'm excited that I'm also... Um, I'm uh, um, in a COO role over at, at Lucid, which is the you know the best advertising uh, uh, company for uh, uh, for CBD brands. And um, the nice thing is, you know, I'm, I'm very involved there, and I, I have a doubt and sense of of uh, uh, of what's going on and how they're able to kick major tail for CBD companies. Um, and so, uh, and and then over at Eastgale, we basically we we build the websites and. Uh, Lucid does an amazing job at, at um, you know making them successful through advertising. For sure. Yeah, we got a good thing going. And people, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you one thing, like website designers in my career as an entrepreneur have been the hardest people to deal with, honestly. I, <laughs> uh, but I give Av and his team the highest stamp of approval. I would I put my career on it. If you hire Avin and his team, you're going to get the best treatment possible and they're going to hit deadlines. They're going to do what they say they're going to do. And so you won't have, I can't tell you how many people come to me and tell me the hassles and nightmares they've had with web designers. Yeah. So if you want to avoid all that people hire Avin. And I, like I said, I put my career on this. So just contact me. I'll get you in touch with Avin. We'll make sure it's the right fit and then we'll go from there. But I think you've given some amazing info today for people to follow if they want to try to do it themselves. But honestly, I think the best investment you can make is to hire Avin and his team to make sure you get it right from the beginning. Then you never have to go back and do everything from scratch. Right. Yeah. Then focus on what's next rather than having to redo it. Yeah. You can focus on getting sales <laughs> instead yeah, of exactly. like, oh man, I got to redo this website another three to five months of right, right, right. everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate you taking the time, Avin, and I'd love to do this again sometime soon. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, we love that. And thanks, Matt, for taking the time. And again, I know uh, I love what you're doing and helping these companies to be successful. So um, I'm really glad to chat here, and uh, definitely glad to uh, you know to help on the on the web design side. So appreciate it. Thanks, Avin, and I'll be talking to you soon, and and we'll be catching up soon. People reach out to me, and we'll get you connected to Avin. Yep, sounds good, man. Have a great day, everybody.